so I will say just a few words about what I know, which is the uh, high temperature cuprate superconductors. In my opinion, the mechanism of uh, high TC in cuprates is still one of the key open problems uh, in the physics of our times. And not just because TC is so high, but also because the so-called normal state in cuprates is everything but normal. It is actually spectacularly unlike what you would expect from the standard textbook description of metals. Uh, this is currently a very hot topic, going under the name of bad metals, meaning uh, metals that violate the multi-offer regal limit, or strange metals, meaning that resistivity remains linear down to millikelvin temperature, and in some cases, the elastic scattering seem to be completely absent. And in cuprates, uh, both of these can happen, and sometimes both in the same sample, the same material. And uh, in the case of LSEO, the slope actually stays exactly the same, like from uh, TC all the way to uh, about 1,000 Kelvin. And uh, that points to the fact that both the bad and strange metal behaviors may actually be uh, of one and the same origin. It has been speculated this points to fast and strong energy relaxation at the quantum limit, to ultra-fast hydrodynamization, and quantum limited shear viscosity like what happens in quark gluon plasma. Uh, whatever it is, watch for the new developments in theory and experiments probing these bold new ideas in the uh, uh, next years to come. Next, the dependence on TC on the superfluid density is also quite anomalous and unusual. Uh, importantly, an almost identical dependence has been seen in different cuprates. Apparently, in cuprates, TC does not depend on the details of the electron spectrum, nor of the spectrum of phonons or any other bosonic excitation that may be relevant, uh, nor on their coupling, and not even on whether the cuprate is underdoped or overdoped. This indeed contradicts the most basic tenets at the essence of the BCS theory. And next, we checked uh, the charge of the carriers in the most direct way by measuring the shot noise. And here is a result for one doping level in LSEO. The red line shows the BCS pairing region. Uh, we see pairs way outside of this region and along both axes meaning not only well above the C, but also at the energies that are several times higher than the superconducting gap. To the best of my knowledge, this has never been seen uh, before in any superconductor. Cuprates are really unique in this respect, at least as far as we know today. Needless to say, this also strongly contradicts any description based on BCS theory, clean or dirty or rainbow. Uh, rather, our very comprehensive data set on over 3,000 Montana strontium cupre films studied uh, till today, uh, as well as the entire body of literature, um, experiments by many groups around the globe, by various techniques and on various cuprates, points to a new paradigm. It seems as if we had two electronic components, one that is pretty conventional and the other which is strange and bad. The conventional component increases with temperature, magnetic field, or doping. And it tracks the chemical potential, as Professor Zoran Radovich explained in his invited talk. The strange component, on the other hand, shows a resistivity that is linear in temperature magnetic field, uh, and it violates strongly the colors uh, scaling law. This strange component uh, decreases with temperature, magnetic field, or doping, 
and it vanishes at the edge of the superconducting dome. Uh, so it tracks the nematicity amplitude, and very important, it also tracks the superfluid density and TC. Therefore, it appears that high temperature superconductivity originates uh, just from this strange component. So, what can we say about our make, main question, which is why is TC in Cooper so high? Uh, the answer is for two reasons. First, the pairing interaction is very strong. This is indeed directly seen in tunneling and short noise spectra. And second, cooperates are quasi two dimensional. Both these facts favor BC over BCS, BCS in the uh, BCS, BCS crossover diagram. It seems therefore almost inevitable that we are on the right hand side of the BCS BC crossover. And if that's the case, that would indeed explain why the TC is so high. Now, more tricky question is why the pairing interaction is so strong to begin with. And I guess again for two reasons. One is that cuprates are native metal, insulator, metal, insulator super lattices. And superconductivity is therefore interfacial. Uh, between the metal and the ionic insulator. The second reason is chemical. And the copper 3D and oxygen 2P levels almost coincide. This is an almost unique occurrence in the periodic table. And this is the reason why super exchange is so exceptionally strong uh, in cuprates compared to uh, other oxides and other uh, materials. So in summary, I have the feeling that we are getting closer to crack the cuprate enigma. If and when we do, this should open the door for discovery of new and better high TC materials. Thanks. I will stop here to leave some time for any questions or comments that you may have. Thank you very much for this beautiful review. control things from here, so um, it would probably be better if uh, Ali, uh, if you can, you can uh, yes, share yes, the session. Yes, so that way it's in I'll, the, I'll watch it. And I cannot hear you very well. Uh, be be uh, sure okay. that you speak to the microphone. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, there, there is one question, by the way, Ivan, from the audience. Professor Katzin Pepin is asking a question. Oh, I didn't ask it yet. I will just uh, ask it now, uh, Ivan. Yeah, Ivan, do you hear me? Yeah. Okay, I will shout. So, <laughs> would you say, it's just a question which is uh, dear to my, my thoughts at the moment, that uh, around uh, the phase diagram of the cuprates, let's say at high enough temperature or energy, you have the formation of uh, a very uh, uh, tight uh, bosonic pairs, uh, uh, like particle-particle and particle-hole pairs, and that could provide uh, this uh, BCS-BC crossover you talk about. Would it be a solution? their size or extension uh, very much. What uh, The way to address that question, uh, at least uh, when we are in the superconducting state, is by measuring the critical field from which we can infer the coherence length uh, and superfluid density or penetration depth from which we can infer the distance between the pairs. Uh, and what 
So you get two length scales and you can compare the two. And it turns out that in all, everywhere we can, we can measure it. Regrettably, we cannot measure that, uh, uh, above PC because we cannot measure the penetration depth. It diverges and superfluid carry density is zero. Uh, but, um, under the, under the dome, the size of the pairs inferred from the critical field is always smaller than the distance <coughs> between the pairs that is inferred from the magnetic penetration depth. And if that is true at low temperatures, uh, I would imagine it, you know, the, the pairs should remain small even at higher temperatures. Thanks. We also have online question. Pull out something very quickly here. Can you see this picture? Can you see yes. this picture? Yes. Well, uh, <laughs> Professor Dawar Kahuna showed this in his talk. And uh, later I tried to clarify that this was a joke. Uh, uh, it is a, a parody, it's sarcasm. It's saying, you know, we start from low temperature for one Kelvin and it's BCS and it works perfectly. And then uh, we get to this fork and then uh, we get some exotic uh, superconductivity in cuprates and even uh, more exotic superconductivity like cone metals or whatever in, in plectides and then uh, uh, by the way, this iron selenide strontium titanate turned to be float. This is, this was experimental mistake. There is nothing at 110 in, in iron selenide superconductors. Uh, 45 Kelvin is about the highest that TC has been seen in transport and magnetic measurement. But then, you know, magically somehow we make a somersault and then at uh, 200 Kelvin or 300 Kelvin we come back to BCS. I think this is so unlikely that that uh, something is wrong here. We don't know uh, uh, um, yet almost anything about superconductivity in in hybrids. Uh, um, you mentioned penetration depth. Penetration depth has not been measured. Uh, I don't know what's the penetration depth in 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 hybrids. Um, you need to measure the the superfluid. Density. You need to measure the Meissner effect, but to the best of my knowledge, my Meissner effect has never been seen uh, yet in hydro. It, so yeah, it was measured. It was measured about one month ago. It's on. Uh, oh, uh, it, it, yeah. okay, yes, I'm, they did it. Yes, a image group. I can yes, can yes, send no. you the link. No, no, no. You have to read the paper, paper carefully. I have read that paper. It's posted on the. On the con map. And if you look at the data, uh, they see a drop, uh, in, in zero field, but, uh, when it is field cold, there is nothing there. So you see, um, uh, you see screening, but there is no Meissner effect. Meissner effect is flux expulsion. So when you cool it in field, it should, below the, the critical field, it should expel the magnetic field. And that's not seen. So, um, I don't understand. Uh, what's going on in hybrids. I cannot comment. But to me, it is uh, what I would be ready to bet, uh, you know, a bottle of very good wine that once, first of all, if we, if we confirm without any doubt that what we are seeing there is superconductivity. And second, if we study and understand that superconductivity by range of, uh, of uh, techniques, that it will turn out not to be BCS. That I will, I will bet uh, a bottle of very expensive wine. 
But Thank that's, you. That's a bet. That's a bet. You know, not. I I don't know. For for now, I don't know. I have just a, a feeling. The coherence length has to be so short. Uh, you know that the TC has to be controlled by phase fluctuations, like in Kuprets. That means it cannot be mean field behavior. And I would also expect it to be strongly type two. Yes, it is. Yes, so it's huge up critical fields. Yes. Okay. Anyway, that's uh, that's all I know. Do we have other questions? If not, thanks again. The next review is uh, review of material advances. German. Okay, this is this will be the first presentation I give without any pictures or videos which is what I usually use because I could not charge my, um, I went into most of the materials um, presentations, but I could not charge my pictures into my computer because I have um, a different system in my phone than in my Macintosh, sorry. So uh, let me give you um, a quick idea, this will be very short, of what I have seen in the different aspects of um, superconductor materials that were presented in the meeting. Um, first, um, what I would call lower TC superconductors. Um, there's, there's a present, there was a presentation on um, the niobium surface modification with ultra short pulse lasers, um, which generate laser induced periodic surface structures, which are nanometer size in period, so that this can be usually, they can range between 200, approximately 200 to more than 500 nanometers in period. So these are very interesting. They are very highly ordered in a large area. So they are very interesting because they affect surface superconductivity properties. And um, from other um, published work, they affect also pinning and levitation forces. So um, I think this is an upcoming um, processing route which will be very interesting in, in probably most types of superconductors. And it can be scalable. Um, concerning magnetic in diboride, there were uh, presentations on um, mag um, iron magnesium diboride wires um, under increased pressure in the processing, um, achieving denser cores, and for example, with multi-metallic concentric configurations. In, in which case, um, a five times increase in JC was observed with uh, a combination of longer annealing times. Um, continuing with magnesium diboride, addition of malic acid uh, was observed to yield a two times enhancement in levitation force. Also, um, oxide dispersion strengthened alloy ideas were applied to magnesium diboride processing with significant improvement in properties. In addition, magnesium titanium bor diboride with addition of silver was um, demonstrated to improve the levitation force. And um, carbon encapsulated nanoboron and the use of magnesium versus magnesium hydride um, was studied, with, if I remember correctly, with magnesium yielding um, better properties of the superconductor versus the hydride. And concerning high temperature superconductors, I give two um, examples. There's um, in visco superconductors, um, the studies concerning doped or compositionally modified visco have shown to improve the, the JC values. And oxygen doping in visco single crystals versus polycrystalline samples um, studies um, was also shown to be very beneficial. And in this case, single crystals um, exhibited much better results than the polycrystalline samples. And concerning IPCO, well, then there was, um, I think I remember a study of the effect of tungsten oxide doping, basically. Um, concerning iron-based uh, superconductors, there was a very nice review by Professor Lidham 
um, where he showed excellent results under very intense magnetic fields and um, the perspectives for their applications. I, there were other, other works that I'm not highlighting, but I hope I can, I can send perhaps a more detailed um, review for the organization with, with the pictures that I somehow will get here, which have much more details than what I can show here. In, and um, what I call alternative and other aspects of superconductor materials, just to finish, um, there was a very nice review by Professor Shimoyama on joint technology, which he claimed was very difficult until uh, five years ago. But now, in all types of superconductors that have uh, used and with a project that they have um, in Japan, which combines low temperature um, and high temperature superconductors, they, uh, they, have, they really have demonstrated excellent results um, using different layers for making joints and different strategies for making joints. And um, concerning the room temperature superconductors, um, Professor Takano made a very nice review on high pressure th synthesis of new phases, basically hydrides and derivatives of the hydrides and other phases. And um, there was, alternatively, there were also in not high temperature or room temperature superconductivity, there were presentations on high entropy alloys um, of the type that you see here with five elements combined where the, 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 the TC is very low, but um, it's, it's a very interesting proposition to study from the point of view of materials. And also on tungsten oxide, um, non-stoichiometric non tungsten oxide superconductors. Basically, that's what, what I have to present here. And my, um, I don't know if I did something wrong here or not. Um, but um, I would, it's okay, it's finished. Yeah, I just, I just have a comment. I have a comment, a general comment from my point of view from all these years, is that materials development is essential for any technology. It's essential for understanding science to combine with theory, and it requires really high level characterization, as, as Professor Dabor Pabuna said several times. Um, but in my opinion, um, both the theory and the practical applications are highly dependent on how we view materials. And I think we are missing something in the understanding of structure and bonding in materials. There is something we are missing. We have to look elsewhere. And uh, we are still looking too much at balls and sticks in the structures. We have to get away from that. This is my opinion. And we have to give, make a quantum leap in understanding material structures to, in order to improve superconductors. And I think the understanding of superconductors, especially. Thank you. Thank you very much for this review. Questions? Comments? I have, uh, I have a quick comment. Uh, of course, the photographic materials are uh, at, the, at the core of our uh, enterprise. Without that, we would not have this conference. Uh, so, um, uh, I would like to draw your attention to uh, the deadline for nomination nominations for the Bern Matthias Prize. That's uh, kind of the highest prize for the discovery of new superconducting materials. Uh, and there is still uh, some time left for the nominations for the next year. The chair of the committee is Professor Paul Chu, who discovered YBCO, everyone knows him. Uh, and uh, you can find information uh, on the on the website. You go after Ber Matthias Prize, but if not, you can send me an email or to Paul Chu, and uh, I also happen to be on the committee. So send us email, and then we will get you information. There is still some time, and it's important that we nominate uh, people for uh, the most important discoveries in the field of uh, superconducting materials. Thanks. Thank you. Next topic is review of magnetism and magnetic materials. Arkady Zhukov. Yeah, thank you. 
So in, in my part, I would try to, to emphasize on magnetic materials and magnetism. And if you can go further, because I do not have. Okay. So in fact, uh, this topic uh, should con consist of uh, three, uh, four different topics. One is uh, conventional magnetic materials, another one related with nanomagnetism, nanostructures, another one should be related with spin tronics, and the last one with applications. So my main interest was in magnetic materials, therefore I will pay attention a little bit more on these kinds of these topics. So uh, sessions uh, uh, were organized with participation of leading uh, uh, researchers in these fields, for example, mag ma multicaloric materials, magnetic materials, nanomagnetism, etc. And I think this is very important. We have the physical meetings, so first one of the after this uh, uh, COVID epoch, we have a uh, lot of uh, 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 colleagues meeting together in these meetings. I think this is very relevant. I wish to think. A lead for this organizing this uh, meeting online, uh, not online but presential, physical. Uh, as uh, about magnetic materials, I would say well. So my main interest in was functional magnetic materials, and uh, uh, what I uh, saw interesting in this, uh, this uh, meeting was, uh, uh, for example, traditional topics of ferromagnetic materials, which is. Uh, related to development of new uh, materials and new applications is, uh, for example, in soft magnetic materials, I uh, was uh, excited by talk of Ivan Skarvanik. He gave his talk online, but still he was very relevant because he reported very low capacitivity, 0.3 ampere per meter. And also in the session which I was chairing, there were reports on biomarkers and uh, nanotags and also, for example, on photomagnetic recording uh, presented by Andrei Stupakevich. Another session which I, paid I pay, should, should pay attention is the session on caloric materials, so baro, electro, elastomagnetic, so we, we can call it multi-caloric materials, uh, also closer alloys, and the, the way, uh, reports on very uh, interesting, very new magnetic materials, uh, magnetic caloric with uh, shape memory, like nickel manganese gallium copper or nickel manganese t titanium, which present these interesting uh, properties. Also, one of the relevant uh, uh, achievement was uh, development of composite materials with multicaloric, multicaloric properties. This is as regarding the traditional topic of on magnetic materials. So, in the next topic, nanomagnetism is somehow related also with spintronic, but still, I uh, attended these sessions and. There were a lot of uh, interesting uh, presentations on thin tunes, multi layers, patterned nanostructures, nanoparticles, nanowires, and nanostructures. And for example, what, uh, for me, my opinion, was interesting, uh, the, the, it was a session on exchange bias, which is, in fact, is already a traditional topic, but uh, there were some uh, coherent, uh, coherent uh, explanation of the origin of this effect, uh, considering core shell nanoparticles, hybrid nanoparticles, etc. So I think this was interesting, at least for, for my opinion. <coughs> so the next topics uh, should be related to spintronics, but I think maybe uh, uh, Alexandra Golbov will speak also, at least for, from the part of uh, 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 superconductive materials. From my part, there were, I saw many interesting uh, uh, presentation on uh, Magnetic skirmions, solitons, and chiral magnetism, also magnet resistance, magnetization dynamics, and for example, ultra, ultra fast magnetization dynamics, and for, of course, molecular magnetism, which was uh, there was several uh, relevant uh, public, uh, 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 talks on fabrication of new generation of spintronic devices using molecular materials, organic spintronics. Uh, single molecular magnets using lanthanides, etc. And then, uh, talking on the last part of magnetic uh, materials and applications, we have to mention sensors and new functionalities, for example, by compatible uh, uh, materials, sensor for non destructive control, 
uh, microwave devices uh, like smart composite materials with magnetic inclusions, etc. So this is just a very short, uh, brief review from my part. So if anybody wants to add something, I would be happy. Thank you. Question, comments from outside. Okay, thanks, speaker again. Next review is on topological superconductivity. They were Aluna. Yes, there are. I hope you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Thank you. Um, given the fact that there were some additional talks about the formula of this superconductivity, we can see the superconductivity field as blue. And we also saw some problems with the measurements from the time that we can apply superconductivity and we can move to agree. There are just some minor, minor points. And I'll put it in a kind of a, a emerging way of what we all discussed. Like in this conference, I was physically there until yesterday, and right now I'm reporting basically via Zoom. So you can see we can do these things remarkably in various ways. Now, uh, I don't know how to move my slides, but uh, basically the old saying was way back in the 80s by Malcolm Beasley from Stanford that actually materials are the drivers. And it seems to me that actually we agree. Despite of the fact that the theory is important, as we heard also right now, uh, we are still actually dramatically dependent on materials and sometimes uh, they put us like, additional questions and even Bozich rightly said, well, post traumatic questions to the theory. Having said that, I emphasize how important it is for our students. With my full respect to everybody in the audience, myself included, uh, the students count. Well, whether you like it or not, on the scale even to 2050, the students will be very important. I'm very concerned what is the perception of students because they have other challenges. And I think high TC and related material superconductivity and topological superconductors, the challenges are striking. I think this conference was a huge success because of that. And, and it's simple. We ask such a profound questions that I think I will certainly need at least one week uh, just to kind of digest and then really discuss with you. So I apologize why I cannot go into depth. Even several colleagues, including Ivan and others, gave me some additional uh, contributions, but I can't really do it so fast. So I apologize. We'll probably do it at the next conference. Now, I will mention Denis Sunko because he is uh, one of my colleagues who is a theorist yet understands chemistry. And as you heard, we have pretty good ideas how we go about BCS or maybe EEC. And, and Katrin, you also given a very good uh, contribution. As many other people, we heard uh, uh, Vitali, uh, sorry, uh, Valerie uh, Vinokur on, on metal insert transition, supercon transition. But then Isunko actually likes to emphasize certain things that we chemists and physicists meet, not just two dimensional uh, aspects, but many others. Like he remembered and warned us, let's say, the Hund's rule, which I used even as a student. Uh, actually, it was just one of the mythologies which we had in our teaching. Uh, he emphasized how oxygen states matter in this kind of uh, uh, cooperates. And then he looks into the physics and chemistry and also covalent, covalent and the ionic aspects. And I won't tell more because it's all in his talks and papers. And he's not the only one. Actually, there is a group of theorists is working in that direction. And that could be of use to all those who are saying, well, we would like to link more intimately theory and experiment. And I think that we will see in the moment why it is important, because the complexity of these materials is staggering. I emphasize in my talk, and this is really thanks to Ivan Bozovic, that if you want to make one of these materials, you have to be right in that spot where it says 2212 with a fantastic precision. Now, how do you achieve that? Of course, in the good old days, you had a good chemist who would help you to achieve that precision, and you will make a sample in the laboratory, and as we all agreed, characterize. And we had one of those in, you know, oh, sorry, in, in Lausanne, Helmut Berger. He supplied thousands of samples to many groups around the world. 
And I won't say they were bad samples, they were even excellent on that scale. But with single crystals, it was very difficult to get the quality, which we'll see in the moment when I quote something else, particularly when you look to very, very subtle uh, aspects of the theory. And that aspect of the theory is when you go against what we call a um, uh, phase diagram, and it's extremely subtle. These two arrows, uh, three arrows that you see, is basically what's called strain. Strain was done by Ivan Bozovic, several other people, my group as well, where we actually changed the uh, critical temperature also by the growth induced strain. That is not easily done with single crystals. So that these are some aspects where we have to really go for the technique, which actually done also in very different quantum technologies. To long the story short, uh, there is a challenge by Ivan uh, by Neven Barisic. Neven Barisic does single crystals. He makes them himself. He studied in Lausanne. He's now in Vienna and Zagreb. He does a lot of incredibly interesting work. And he sees really the Fermi liquid and sees this localized state. I will not go into his talk because it's very detailed. He gave it. We are all puzzled by it. We, we know that he knows what he's talking about. But we really have to come a bit closer to understand why does he see it. Uh, and I remember that actually New Zealand group and several people even from Australia used to see something like that. Uh, Nevin is a close friend. I'll really get into those data more in depth to see what is this telling us. I don't think it changes what Ivan uh, said as, uh, as his summary, which I also share, but I'm puzzled by all this. And, and this is definitely something in this conference where I have to personally digest. Moreover, uh, this machine that I know very well because I was also in Brookhaven, I said personally it's the way to go, but I know that Ivan has even a better ones. And the reason is I defended that view. And the reason why I defended that view because we had an excellent talks, actually, at least two of them on quantum computing. And only 15 years ago, we wouldn't think much about quantum computing, but we now also discuss that seriously. And if you want to go to quantum computing, you really have to control every scale and understand physics, that's for sure. So you will need a machine like that, and even more. You will need, and many people know that, you will need, uh, because you need to fully control, for example, here, uh, as Ivan has done it, from superconductor to insulator. As I said, uh, uh, Valerie uh, uh, discussed that, but actually it's much more subtle. If you want to control that in a sample, which is nanoscopic and small, or even integrated circuit, or a quantum computing, you really need tremendously reliable technology. And that you don't get in the lab where you just do single crystals or mixed powders or in the labs that are really uh, with a weak infrastructure. I emphasize in my talk and everybody at the conference understand that you need really fantastic infrastructure. Unfortunately, that's also expensive. And, and for example, uh, in, in Max Planck in Stuttgart, our friend and colleague uh, Klaus Kern has built the Levity Laboratory. We are doing it already now in Lausanne. Several other people do it. I really think uh, that, that in Basically, next few conferences, we'll all have these kind of levitating laboratories to look into these subtle aspects of the topics that we study and quantum topics and superconductivity is quantum topic, no question. So it's, by the way, magnetism uh, requires that level of perfection. And there is still a kind of to round it off for those that cannot afford very expensive laboratories. And late Oyston Fisher said that if you really want to find the room temperature superconductivity, you have to hire another Alex Miller. So I allow for that. I mean, there might be some talents among us who can really make it maybe a different way, but I didn't see it in this conference. I always allow for some fantastic creative options, and that's the case thing happened. But by and large, I think it will happen basically step by step, and I think it's still a long way to go, but on the other hand, I think we will succeed. Thank you very much. Questions, comments, please. From outside. Okay, thanks, speaker again. Next review is review of large scale applications. Now, Yuki, Amemiya, please. Yes, uh, Naoki Amamiya just sent me a couple of days ago that uh, he cannot make it because of managing time differences. Uh, so, 
There has been very good presentations on large scale applications. Maybe Slava, you can say something about it. And we don't have a regular pre presentation for the large scale applications. And we can talk about magnet science and technology, and then maybe other aspects of large scale applications. Or, okay. And Nayaki Yamami is just, you know, expressing his apologies that he cannot make it, but um, these presentations are saved and in, in YouTube and everyone can have an access to review what has been presented at the conference. So, uh, first of all, uh, the professor Naoyuki Amelia himself uh, made a very nice presentation on thermal runaway and protection experiments of coated conductors. Uh, then it was a very nice presentation of uh, Erkan Ertekin on uh, test results of three phase 100 kilovolt ampere uh, transformer. Uh, for the large scale applications, uh, I have to highlight the superconducting technologies for cancer treatment with particle therapy. It was a very, very beautiful presentation. And the next one that was very nice, quantum uh, sculptal project for sophisticated heavy ion radiotherapy. Also, it was very comprehensive presentation for ITER, experimental characterization uh, of the ITER superconducting joints. Uh, it was made by Marka Reshi. And uh, also I have to mention the study of experimental levitation force, capacity of the mouthpiece surface superconductor maglev system for different HTS and EMG interaction surfaces. Uh, the last presentation I have to mention was a beautiful presentation of Ali Genser about GM clear cold superconducting magnet for 1.5 Tesla MRI application. Uh, Professor spoke about design, manufacture, and uh, performance tests. This is not a very large magnet, but uh, this uh, innovation technology and uh, uh, the results should be promised. So, next speaker. Next speaker is Ali Boje, Review of Electronic Applications. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, the presentations at the conference can be classified under four topics. One is about superconducting computing, other is quantum computing, and 
sensor, radiation sources and readouts, then fabrication and fundamentals. About the superconducting computing, especially the Professor Yoshikawa's talk was about uh, extremely energy efficient high performance computing, which also included a synthesizer. So it, this is very important for uh, large scale uh, design of uh, superconducting uh, compute AQFP circuits. Uh, and memory problem is also tackled in the conference and uh, a proposal about a neuromorphic computing design was uh, proposed. Then about the quantum computing, we had a, a special session at 9 p.m. And uh, so we, we discussed the state of the art challenges and materials. And another interesting Okay. About the sensors, radiation source and readout, uh, that there were presentations about how to improve the SCUD sensitivities and uh, some examples of SCUD applications, some novel examples, as for example, like metallic contaminant detection in lithium ion battery. So it's good to see that uh, SCUDs are able to be used in mainstream uh, systems. And uh, for the radiation sources, there were presentations about uh, terahertz sources. Professor Kadawaki and Yilmaz Yumshek presented this. And I was happy to see that uh, intrinsic Josephson junctions can has the potential to provide milliwatts of uh, terahertz power. And about the fabrication and integration, so they uh, Novel J Josephson junction fabrication and imaging methods are presented and uh, junction models are presented. Also design and simulation tools are presented. This is also important for designing and uh, designing high, uh, highly complicated Josephson junction based circuits and then that can be fabricated. So basically we had just uh, maybe two sessions about superconducting electronics, but uh, key components of the superconducting electronics uh, devices were presented. Thank you. Questions, comments, please. I, I would just like you to give back your uh, first time you had the book, very fast book. I will not say it, say it again. Uh, could you please bring back your first slide? First slide. Wait a minute, please. This, this one. This one? Okay, sorry, thank you. Any other questions? Okay. So the last presentation for this last session on this conference, not the last one, is a review on spectronics and other advances by Alexander Golubov. Liz. Hello, good afternoon. So it's a pleasure for me to summarize advances of superconducting spintronics. Actually, it's grown in a very broad field. And um, thanks to organizers at uh, this, this conference, we had a very nice um, session on this subject. And uh, I can just very briefly recap what was uh, discussed. 
Yes, so uh, we had several uh, interesting presentations, not only on uh, theoretical side, which was, of course, very nice, but also on the practical side, uh, in particular um, by uh, uh, Alek Mukhanov from Hypress company in the USA. It's now uh, changed to uh, um, CIQ, uh, which is a uh, uh, follow-up follow from Hypress. That's a company which actually does a lot in practical applications of superconductivity. And uh, this picture is from the talk of uh, Mohanov, which actually emphasizes the importance of um, coming to new technology from semiconductors to superconductors because the uh, power consumption is now a major problem for many electronic applications. And um, that's, that was the motivation. And there have been a number of talks in our session uh, by Professor Renard Tagirov, who was online, and also Professor Sidorenko. Uh, who discussed uh, various designs uh, of um, uh, possible, sorry, possible superconducting solutions. I think. Uh, yes. ah. Can it come back? Yes. Yes. Uh, possible superconducting solutions. So, and uh, I can show you just a few examples of uh, some uh, uh, key ideas what people are now work. Uh, it's um, so-called spin valve structures, and uh, because uh, it's a way to do superconducting memory, uh, which is, will be compatible with uh, RSFQ, with single flux quantum logic, and then it uh, can be fully integrated in superconducting circuits. As an example uh, of typical spin, spin valve, when we have, uh, we can control the transition temperature of a superconducting film uh, by changing magnetization directions of adjacent uh, ferromagnetic fields. Uh, like shown here, and there is a number of designs which also involve uh, magnetization in plane and out of plane. In particular, in some structures, we deal with so-called triplet superconductivity, which also gives a lot of food for theorists. We had several uh, representative talks by theoreticians in our session, and um, you can see that um, uh, several examples of um, how to control transition temperature of superconductor. That was a, one of, uh, a lot of uh, activity goes on now worldwide, this subject. And finally, um, well, uh, there is a typical uh, what structure what can now be achieved in experiments. It's possible to control uh, interfaces very accurately and make controllable uh, junctions, uh, which are now already um, sufficiently, sufficiently advanced to be used in uh, circuits, electronic circuits. And uh, finally, another idea is to um, uh, not only have uh, the passive element like uh, uh, spin valve, but also uh, to use uh, Josephson junctions, uh, controllable Josephson junctions uh, using also ferromagnetic layers. And this uh, is also very, um, very promising because uh, already recently so-called pi junctions have been disco discovered when you can uh, make the controllable shift of phase of pi and it can be also used in qubits. And, uh, and then you want to go to nanoscale, uh, and this is one of designs made in uh, Sweden, Swedish group by Vladimir Krasnov, uh, using FIB technology. And uh, this small, really, nanoscale junctions can be also used, and this work was also presented in our session. So uh, to summarize, I cannot give the full overview because it's a very really broad field, but um, it was a very representative session, and uh, I want to thank organizers now for making it possible, and uh, to, for many people to come here in person, and it was perfectly organized, and others joined online. So thank again to organizers, and that's all from my side. Questions, comments, please. Alexander. Uh, so I have one question. So in your view, in your view, what is the most reliable random access memory for rapid single quantum flux? So do you expect that it's supposed to be uh, done by superconductor for magnet structures or we shall interface a semiconductor quantum dot system with a superconducting device?
Hello? Yes. So um, uh, I can refer to the presentation of Oleg Mukhanov. Actually, it was my first slide. And he actually uh, argued that uh, ferromagnetic structures are very promising. They work on it in Hyperis. And uh, uh, at least it's a very promising direction, that what I can say. Yes. OK, thank you. Other questions from outside? Let's thank speaker again. It was the last review for today. We close the session, and uh, I suppose it's time to thank our chairman, Professor Ali Genser, for very beautiful organization of this conference in very tough conditions. And uh, I hope he will speak to us. OK. And thank you all. And we are really happy to host you here in Bodrum. And I see almost all of us yeah, are pleased to stay in this place, either in person or online. And this is the photo taken. We are not quite sure all the participants were able to uh, join the uh, photo. And our colleagues in this hard time were able to make the statistics of attendance and other um, information about the conference. Maybe we can move to the next slide, yes? Okay, these are the statistics of the conference. So we have had uh, participation from 51 countries. And number of participants on site or in person is less than 200, but close to 200. About 20 of them are from organizers and the private firm staff took responsibility uh, to make live streaming of the presentations on YouTube, also on Zoom. And we will be making some editing to these presentations if the presenter is not happy in his or her presentation and some parts could be cut and made available to public for future use. And this is our approach, how to conduct the conference. So online participants is about 352. This could be more, because YouTube links were sent to uh, about 1,000 electronically registered participants of ICSM also in the previous years. And total is more, is about 550 participants. And I believe with the YouTube um, online participants, it could be numbering about 600 or above. So total number of oral presentations is 315. Total number of posters presentations is 212. Some of the posters we could not succeed correctly because some, well, I don't know. The, some of our email is maybe did not reach to presenters. We had some no-shows, but in total, uh, numbering more than 500 presentations with the hybrid format, other than few no-shows, worked very well. And this is due to your dedication to this conference to make uh, a success for all. And thank you very much for this. And now we had some conversations with the hotel management over the few days, and we signed the contract yesterday. The next ICSM will be in 2000. Maybe next slide, please. 
uh, will be here in the usual time of the conference, end of April. And I hope at this time of the conference, there will be new convention center with more sophisticated uh, infrastructure. If not, I think this convention center still accommodates our uh, expectation. There are a few uh, conferences that we need to make announcement. Mike from Poland, I think he's, maybe you can hand, hand in your presentation. And before that, there is one small conference also being um, initiated in Australia. One of our ICSM colleagues requested me to make this announcement because it's very late in Australia now. So there are two conferences to be made announcement and Mike is going to do it for me. Um, what else to say? I mean, hopefully we carry on for the conferences and the venue is nice here. And Davor Pavana, uh, when was, he was here, uh, requested that we can initiate new conference on quantum technologies or quantum materials. I will discuss this with my, my colleagues, whether <coughs> some, some of our friends could find some time to spend in the organization of such a new conference. Hopefully, uh, quantum materials and quantum technologies will have a big impact in the societies, in the nations, if it goes beyond the expectations of scientists and politicians and decision makers, I see that there will be two types of countries in the future, poor countries and rich countries. There will be nothing in between. Hope we will learn how to live in peace, in harmony, without borders between nations, also in terms of scientific collaboration. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, uh, maybe also from my side, I will express the gratitude for the organizers uh, uh, for just uh, making this uh, meeting possible, uh, which was important to us, and uh, we learned a lot. They were very nice, fantastic presentations. Well, that's always a kind of sad moment where a meeting like this draws to the end, and then, well, what can be said? Life must go on, and there are other meetings ahead of us. Uh, so, uh, the next one uh, that I'm just going to say a few words about is... Uh, no, no, not yet. Good. Uh, is the meeting which is uh, organized by the European Magnetism Association. This is called GEMS, uh, Joint uh, European uh, Magnetic Symposia. It has been initiated in Grenoble, and the idea is was just to combine all these possible magnetic events to one place so that people may go and just exchange the ideas. Thank you. Yeah, okay. And so it, it is supposed to take place every year. However, it, uh, it doesn't because when the big conference like ICM or Inter, Intermac comes to Europe, then gems skip it. So, for example, the last conference was in Lisbon. Or I pressed, I pressed the wrong. Okay. Yeah, so the last conference was in Lisbon in, uh, in um, 2020, and the next one will be in uh, uh, 2022, next year, and this is going to be organized in Warsaw. Okay, I'm pretty much sure you know where Poland is. Warsaw is a capital of uh, Poland, so the location is Warsaw, Poland, the dates. The conference is going to be hybrid one. So both on-site and, um, and online. And for this hybrid event, the date has been set. This is the end of July. 
if the thing turns, turns really nasty, we truly hope not, then the conference will be uh, switched to virtual form, and then probably it will be mm, held at the end of August, which is the typical time for James conferences. But this one, uh, for other reasons, uh, for, for the availability of venue, that one is scheduled to be end of July. So if you want to take this date with you, this is between 20th and 29th of July 2022. Uh, at that time, weather in the Warsaw in Poland is usually very uh, pleasant, dry, so it's a very nice place to uh, visit. The conference is going to be organized jointly by the Faculty of uh, Physics Warsaw University and at the Institute of Physics Polish Academy of Sciences. Uh, the venue is going to be uh, old university campus at the historical uh, mm, uh, center of so, so these are some highlights. Uh, at, at now we see that the regular fee for the conference should be around uh, 500 euro for the visitors, for the uh, on-site visitors. Uh, that, of course, that there will be reduced price uh, for the students. Uh, this price also includes uh, lunches and our idea is to keep the participants as close to the venue, I mean, on the venue for the, for the whole day, from the beginning till the end. Uh, the organizing committee is, uh, already, um, is already set, so there is a um, Professor Wisniewski from the um, Institute of Physics and Professor Twardowski uh, from the University of Warsaw, so they, they are the co-chairmen. The program committee uh, is also already scrambled and I am the chair of this program committee. So, what's going to be happened? Uh, on GEMS usually uh, there are some 16 to 18 topical sessions, so it's very similar like in this conferences. So basically the scope goes through the whole magnetism, superconductivity, um, um, all these technical applications, memories, whatever is, whenever the magnetism tends to be important, there is a session, a, a special slot uh, devoted for this uh, subject. So the conference webpage will be uh, set out maybe within a week. And then please just look for the GEMS 2022 and then all, and then all the in, informations will be given then. So I thank you very much for your attention and I cordially invite you to visit Warsaw end of July next year for the GEMS conference. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so I was just asked to introduce another, uh, another conference. Uh, so whoever wants to go to Australia? Yeah, yeah, yes. Okay, so uh, this is uh, September. And this is end of September. So right after James, so you just go to Warsaw, then you have a holiday break and you jump to Australia. Okay, so we, it looks we are supposed to be the... Uh, great, uh, great reef, and then so this is applied superconductivity and magnetism, and this is on Gold Coast Convention and ex uh, Exhibition Center. So we are going to have some nice visitors. Yeah, so they will come and uh, visit the conference. Uh, the conference chairs are uh, uh, Dr. Hussein Yama, uh, Professor Yamauchi, in and. Uh, Professor Doe, uh, they are all from uh, Queensland, uh, Australia. Uh, we've got some sponsors, including Japanese Arato and uh, uh, this uh, Australian uh, universities. Do, do, do we have other page of this? Okay, so this is all. Okay, I mean, starting from, uh, I mean, concentrating on this, we've got everything, so just basic magnetism. Let's say this is NNS. Uh, we've got superconductivity and we've got uh, application. 
we've got maglev train. So, on behalf of the organizers, please feel uh, be invited to Australia. This is end of uh, September 2022. First to Warsaw and then to Australia. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dear colleagues, uh, I would like to announce one more conference, which is uh, will be organized in the uh, in the fall of 2020-22 in Moscow, in the city of Moscow. It will be our uh, continuation of our former conferences, chain of our conferences on fundamentals of superconductivity and the topics will include quantum materials as well. So I'm not at the moment uh, able to fix uh, firmly the dates, but usually we arrange these conferences uh, uh, close to or at the birthday of Vitaly Ginsburg, which is October 4. So it will be <clears throat> the season which is in the United States called uh, like Indian summer. It's mild weather and uh, almost center of Moscow. Uh, the organizers are Lebedev Institute and co-chairs are Michael Sadovsky, Professor Michael Sadovsky from Yekaterinburg and me. Thank you for your attention. Please follow the website or we will distribute the announcement as soon as we, as we prepare. Thank you. If there is anybody who would like to say something, or if not, um, yes, um, okay. I just want to mention two more conferences. Uh, one will be in Paris, June 8 till 11. It's called Quest, which is short for Quantum Engineered Sensing and Information Technology. It's going to be a big conference. It's chaired by Professor Manije Razegi. Uh, and they have several Nobel Prizes uh, winners already listed as speakers. So it's uh, along the lines that uh, Davor has suggested on quantum uh, information technology materials, etc. And the other, of course, is M Square S, uh, which is uh, held every three years. The next one uh, coming will be in Vancouver and is chaired by Andrea Damascelli from uh, University of British Columbia. So I hope to see some of you at some of these conferences, probably, uh, perhaps, in a live. Let's close the session. The conference is over. We hope to see you in 2023. I wish you a pleasant stay until you travel back to your home country. Okay, thank you. And close it.